Servus und hallo, my name is Louis from TNH Group and in this video I'm going to tell you how to calibrate your resins to make this a thing of the past. This video is also sponsored by Uniformation 3D, the makers of the Uniformation GK2, which is handy dandy right here. I have received a discount to buy this printer and if you want to have a discount as well, go to their website and use the co code LEWIS on a checkout to receive an $80 discount on the printer. All of the information regarding that is also in the video description. Why would we calibrate and adjust the exposure times anyways? There are tons of uh, good profiles out there that you can use and they are good, right? The simple answer is they are mostly right, uh, but not necessarily for your specific use case. Generally, they are uh, made from people that are in the same hemisphere as you and probably have like the same climate, but that's not a given factor. So um, it plays a huge role in the actual printing experience and your settings that you use. Most of the profiles that you uh, get when you support a creator on Patreon or just find them for free online, they tend to overexpose a little bit uh, to give the people a good printing result. That is not usually the best way to do that. If you print in uh, colder climates, you can build a solution like I have that heats the room where the printers are in, uh, or the room is generally hotter to make the viscosity lower, or you choose a printer with a heating function, just like the GK2. We calibrate the resin just to see how far we can go with the printers, how far we can push the speed, and how low we can get the exposure before we get a fail. And if you reach that point, uh, you add a safety factor, and which usually means you dial the speed down and adjust the exposure just up a tad bit, and then you will have a high quality print with a good reliability. Incorrect settings are nowadays not so far spread, but in, in the older days uh, and in the vastness of the internet you will find a lot of printing fails and uh, things that have gone horribly wrong with resin printing and that's why people used to and still kind of hate resin 3D printing, but it's really easy actually. Do note that this whole video focuses on the resin 3D printing of miniatures because that's what I do and that's what I sell and that's what where my hobby is at. I do not print technical parts on resin yet, that's what my other FDM machines are for at the moment. But you can apply the concepts to these as well because engineering type resins tend to be a little bit more viscous and so you've had increased temperature, put away time in and uh, yeah, it should lead to a better experience printing the engineering resin. And we will use the holy grail of calibrating, which is the cones of calibration. This uh, simulates a support on a print. I have linked the file uh, in the video description. If you download the file, there's also a documentation with it. Please read the documentation. I will go over the concept, um, but the what to do uh, will be displayed on there. Performing the actual calibration and then adjusting is really easy. We just check if the printer is in optimal condition. You want a clean and working screen with a clean screen protector. If you want to know more about why we use a screen protector, hey, we all we all have them on our phones, but that I made a video about that. Um, it's linked in the corner. A vet with an intact PFA sheet. Yes, I say PFA because FEP is a thing of the past. If you want to support me in a way, uh, I have three sizes of PFA sheets in my uh, online store and on my eBay shop. Go buy there and if you want a steeper discount because you want to buy loads of them, contact me please. A level build plate with no debris on it, uh, which luckily this printer already has. And ideally you want a way to control the temperature. That can be just an enclosure that you build with a heater in it or the printer has it built in. After that, we can proceed to print the file with the base settings that the manufacturer recommends. That means choosing like the most basic layer height, which is 0.05 millimeters, and the recommended um, exposure settings. Note, if there is a range, start with the highest. Also, you have to uh, choose a different exposure time for, uh, for all the layer heights. For example, I print at 0.02 millimeter layer height or 20 micron layer height. And that's why I will have a different exposure time than you if you print at 50 micron layer heights. After the print has finished, we examine the cones, how they look, the ones that were supposed to fail, fail, the ones that are supposed to succeed, succeed, and if not, adjust. 
uh, like what tool just is displayed in the documentation and a good way to go through the exper experimental phase is to get the exposure time as low as you can and uh, so you have the lowest exposure time with the that still succeeds most of the time and then you can increase the lift speed if the lift speed increases it can lead to failures and then you will have to uh, find like a setting that has good exposure and good lift speed. For the base layer I usually go half or three quarters of the normal printing lift speed. On the older printers and on more viscous resins I had a wait time for the base layers uh, but I don't have that anymore. As well as normal wait times I do not have that in my profiles. But as already mentioned if you print with a more viscous resin and don't have a heating function in the printer it is advised to put in a wait time either after after the print uh, after the after a layer or before a layer just to let the resin flow back essentially create a homogeneous film of resin so that it can be cured again so now that we are done with calibrating i like to do a test print on a real example, like if I have found the correct exposure with the cons of calibration, I like to print a test model of some sort that is uh, relevant to me. It doesn't matter what model you choose, it just has to be something that you print a lot. Uh, for example, I print tabletop minis and mostly D&D minis and mostly the humanoid size. The 40mm height, uh, just standard humanoid is the most thing that I print. I have my own model, that will come soon, um, but I print that as a test to see if everything went alright. If you mainly print only masks, you obviously have to print on an only mask to see if everything is correct. Also, if you plan to use anti-aliasing, you obviously have to calibrate with anti-aliasing turned on the way you like it. If you're still trying to find out, choose a middle ground and then you can deviate from that. summary, calibrating a new resin and getting the settings right is a slight tedious process but will give you very very good results. It is required for high quality because only a well calibrated machine can produce uh, good looking parts. It is to note that temperature may impact the performance of the resin in the printing process and that you will have to, uh, as I just said, you will have to turn on anti-aliasing if you want to print with anti-aliasing. Also, regularly checking your prints is advised uh, just to kind of see if things go out of out of line. Uh, just obviously, I as as I still ship all of my minis and uh, remove the supports, I look at them fairly closely. And if I see something setting is off or I have too much trouble removing the supports, I can adjust it. The GK2 allows me to kind of almost have laboratory conditions where I can set a temperature, it heats the resin to that temperature and then it prints perfectly well every time and it's very advantageous to have such a thing in your print farm. Also using high quality resin is a part of uh, having good products and that's why I use Sorotech resin. It's a good resin for an affordable price and I get it very fast. And especially these bigger bottles, you can uh, pick them up if you print a lot. I had a slow first half of uh, 2024 and I went through uh, 10 kilos of resin. And they are regularly on sale, so pick them up. Talking about resin, resin can expire. So uh, if your resin is expired and, and it's not giving you good results, you may want to buy a new bottle of resin. But it would be rare for me to have a bottle of resin that is expired. Maybe on resin that I don't use very often, but mainly by the navy grey, and I think with that. It also should be stored uh, like in a cool and dark place, which this is. This is the coldest room of the house. Also, ventilation is key. I've turned everything off. All, the, all of the printers are off. This, uh, the air filters have been running for, for hours before I went in here. But please look after your health. If you want me to make a video about that, just write it in the comments. Talking about commenting, I would be very happy if you would leave a comment with your experiences with calibrating resins for your 3D printers and especially the cones of calibration. Also, leave a like if you found this video helpful and maybe tell a friend. This was a kind of mini-series that I made in collaboration with Uniformation. I'm still affiliated with them. If you 
uh, buy something from them through my links uh, I will get a commission you know the drill that everybody every influencer has that and uh, I will continue to use this printer there will be an, a half year and a one year update on this at least it should hold longer than that and I will give regular updates on what breaks and what didn't break mm, I hope nothing breaks but uh, the screen and the vet should expire at least once if not it's a very very cheap printer the next videos will not feature this that much but stay tuned for that this was Luis from TNH group I hope you print something and that you have no print failures I will see you in the next video tschüss und auf Wiedersehen